Hey there guys, welcome back for another Warhammer 40,000 Imperium painting video. So, issue 7, this week we didn't get any models. So as usual, I'm going to show you how to paint a Space Marines first founding chapter. So this is one of the original nine chapters. And this week we are painting a Blood Angel. So, watch the video guys if you want to see how to paint this Blood Angel, or how I painted this Blood Angel. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. But for now, here's the video. Okay, so nothing too complicated with this one. I decided to keep it fairly easy and to a parade ready standard. Um, so it should take you no more than an hour, maybe a little bit over. First of all, I've gone ahead and primed the model with a black primer and then I've given it a thin down um, paint over with Abaddon Black just to make sure that everything is nice and uniform with a paint that we can touch up with later on. I'm then going over this with Mephiston Red on all of the armour areas that I want to be red. Again, this is slightly thinned down as always and I'll apply a couple of layers of this. I'm not worrying too much about going over details and stuff, I just don't want it thick enough that it's going to clog the details. But I'll get it a nice, uniform, consistent coat on here, and then we'll come back for the next step. Right, so next we're going to take some non oil and apply this liberally over the entire model, or at least all of the armour. You want this to get into those recesses, um, to sit in some of the sort of the deeper shaded areas. But any flat surfaces, we want to just sort of tint it. Um, we don't want any large pooling on sort of like the tops of the knees or the, uh, the side plates, anything like that. We're just looking to shade those areas or tint those areas. And then anywhere that plates come to a step or overlap, anything like that, Obviously, we want a, a little bit of a line of the uh, the shade in there. Once you've uh, got a nice even coat over the entire model, set it aside for about 10 to 15 minutes to let it dry, and then we can come back. Right, once the non oil has dried, take a medium dry brush and going back to the Mephiston Red. Remove the majority of the uh, the paint. Obviously, you can see I'm using my uh, very dirty scrub palette table bit here. <laughs> Just some textured card. And uh, all you want to do is, working from the top, just come in a sort of downwards motion, very lightly catching the model. We can catch the flat areas with this. All we're looking to do is bring back that Mephiston Red leaving the non-oil in the recesses and that darker um, non-oil stained Mephiston red in the under areas of the armour such as the shin, um, you know the shins of his his armour underneath his arms and things like that. So we don't have to worry too much about catching everything but we just want to make sure that we catch anything on the outsides of the armour where the sun is going would catch. All right, and following from, on from that, I'm now using some Evil Suns Scarlet. And you can see here with the amount that I remove, I just test it on a little sort of blank area of the paper and there's not too much being applied to the area. And all I'm doing, again, going over those same areas, but this time a little bit lighter and being sure that I'm just more on the upper um, surface areas so just where that light from above would catch on and what this is going to do is give a bit of a blend from the dry brush Mephiston layer into this lighter area and obviously it's going to catch some of those edges up on the uh, the raised portions of the armor so with the dry brushing now done I've now obviously switched to um, a standard paintbrush 
and using the Evil Sun's Scarlet, I'm going around the whole model and edge highlighting all of the details. So that's including the areas that would be in shadow. They're going to pick up a little bit of light and obviously the Evil Sun Scarlet is going to be a little bit brighter in those areas than it did on the areas that we just dry brushed. Um, so don't worry about that. We are going to add another layer of highlight on top of those brighter areas. But it's important that we catch all the raised edges of the armor and um, sort of the the cuttings and things like that. All you know, all those little details. Get a line of Evil Sun Scarlet over all those details, and then we can move on to the next step. Following on from that, I've now switched up to some Wild Rider Red. Uh, which again is slightly brighter and I'm going to use this on all of the outer edges or the raised areas of the armor that are exposed to the most light. So anything on the outside of his arms and the upper areas um, such as the sort of the backs of his heel, um, the plate that comes down his calf, the long line that comes down the side of his shin plate, um, and as you can see here, anything on the top area of his wrists. So as you can see, I'm coming down to a little over or about halfway um, down the sides of the, uh, the vertical pieces. And now for the dreaded yellow. So I've decided to go for a yellow helmet on uh, this guy, which I believe represents the second company, maybe, don't quote me on that. Um, but one of the companies has is represented with a yellow helmet. And so I thought that this would be a, a good opportunity to show a, a little bit of yellow. Um, it's not a great colour for covering black, so do take your time with it. It is a, la a layer paint, which makes it even worse for covering black. Um, use thin coats, nothing too thin, but you don't want it globbed on there. Take your time, let each coat dry, and just go over it until you've got a nice, solid, consistent yellow. So once I've got a good coat of yellow on there, and it's nice and opaque, I'm now taking some Reutland Flesh Shade and in very much the same way I did with the red armour I am applying this all over the helmet letting it sit into those recesses and sort of pitted areas and just staining the yellow of the helmet um, you know those wider flatter areas and then I'll set this aside again for about 10 to 15 minutes to let it dry and then we can come back and uh, add some highlights. So once the Reuchland Flesh Shade has dried, I'm now back to the Uriel ye Yellow and I'm applying this to obviously all of the flat areas of the helmet and anywhere where the light is going to hit, staying away from the recessed areas where the shade has settled and also leaving a very small amount of the slightly tainted or stained yellow um, showing as well so you'll get that sort of darker line of the shaded area a little bit of that um, shade over uh, Yuri or yellow and then that will go into this brighter new layer of Yuri or yellow next I'm taking some flash kits yellow and I'm using this on the uppermost area of the helmet, so the top of this uh, mohawk area. You can see I'm just sort of sticking to the edges and then a little bit on the top where the light is going to hit. And I'll also obviously highlight the sort of the, the upper dome part of the sides of the helmet. And as you can see here, just around the, uh, the little earpiece, I'm assuming it is, where these inner headphones maybe or something. <laughs> um, I'll also highlight this along the brows 
and down the ridge along the centre of the, uh, the the mouth fence. And then finally, using some phalanx yellow, I'll run an edge highlight down all of the uh, the hard areas or the hard edges of the helmet. Okay, so with the helmet and the armor now done, I'm moving on to the weapons and the other details. So first of all, I'm just taking some Abaddon Black and I'm going to go over all of the remaining details, such as the under armor that um, shows between his, um, his elbow joint, his bolt gun or bolt pistol, his sword, his Aquila on his chest, as well as any pouches and his belt. Um, get these up back up to a nice uh, solid black, as obviously they're going to have some of that uh, red on there from the dry brushing. And then we can move on with the next steps. Right, so now that everything is a nice solid black, I'm just taking some lead belcher and going through the metallic areas. So for this, obviously I'm doing the teeth of the chainsword as well as the exhaust vent type piece that uh, wraps around just above the hand there. For the bolt pistol, that will be the exposed barrel at the end as well as the sort of the piece that rests on the top of his wrist and the magazine uh, holder. Um, his pistol pouch, the bottom of it, will also be metallic it's got that little raised area as well as the couple of little vents um, or pipes as they are either side of his mouth um, the one that attaches his foot to his shin and also on his right hand elbow there is one there as well right so highlighting the black areas now I'm using some eshin grey and I've thinned it down slightly just to run along the top of the pistol here um, just to give a little bit more um, sort of brightness or bright definition along the top and then I'll use this just to edge highlight um, around the recesses obviously along the um, the grips on the underside of the, uh, the gun there. I'll also run this same colour down um, the chainsword both on the upper side and the underside. And what I'll also do with the chainsword is thin it down slightly and run it from the bottom of the chainsword nearest his hand up to the top. And I'll build up a couple of very, very thin layers um, just to give a slight gray tint highlight um, that builds up from the tip to and then gets darker as it comes down the blade of the sword. Obviously that's only going to be on the upper side, not the underside. I'll also um, apply some very thin lines of this on the wings of the Aquila, as I wanted to give him a black Aquila. And again, edge highlighting the uh, tops of the belt and the um, back of his right knee where you can see the under armor each of those little sort of ridge pieces will get a line of this as well And then finally, I'll take some Dawnstone and apply this as a very fine edge highlight on the upper areas of the, uh, the bolt gun and his chainsword. Right, so moving on to the pouches now, I'm just taking some Mournfang Brown and obviously applying this to the pouch on the front of him, the two smaller ones on his back, and uh, also his pistol pouch. Right, 
Then to highlight the edges of the leather, I'm just taking some scrag brown and running this around all of the upper edges. And on the, uh, the pistol pouch, as it's a little bit larger, you can see I'm just pulling a couple of thin lines across the pouch. I'll touch them with the finger and what this will do is my fingerprint will pick up some of the paint and leave the rest there and it just adds a very small amount of texture to the highlight um, that is left on the pouch there. I'll then apply a thin sort of glaze of Agrax Earthshade. Um, I'll let it pool in a couple of little areas on the pouch, more towards the bottom where it becomes that sort of metal um, surround piece, and a little bit along the um, the sort of the dip of the flap that folds over the handle of the pistol, um, just to add a little bit of depth in there. And for the little symbol on his arm here, I'm just using some Retributor armor. I'm not going to shade or highlight or anything. This is just a sort of a parade ready standard. Um, you know, it's a gold, it's a metallic, it's shiny. So for something of this standard, you don't need to go into super details with it. Um, it's too small anyway. So yeah, just a, a layer of gold over the top. And then finally, for the eye lenses, I'm just using a little bit of Warpstone Glow and a fine brush with a good point on it. And I'm just touching that into each of the eye lenses, um, trying to leave a little bit of shading around um, sort of the, the edge of the green. Now, if you do sort of put too much green in there, you can just um, go back in once it's dried with a small, very small amount of non oil and let that sit into the uh, recesses and uh, that will give you that dark shading around the edge of the green. I'm then rinsing my brush and then going into some moot green and I'm just adding a small dot just to the um, sort of the front portion of the eye. Um, obviously this is going to give a little bit of a, a sort of a reflection shiny effect and then I'll take a very very small dot of the brightest yellow I've got there um, I think it's the flash kits yellow and I'll apply a single dot just to the back or um, sort of the back of each lens Right, and there he is guys, one completed Assault Intercessor. Obviously I've gone ahead and added his chapter icons and um, whether the one on the right shoulder pad represents, I think it's his type, his unit type. Um, also I painted his red kneecap um, black with a skull. I cannot remember why, but I do know that Blood Angels for some reason have a right kneecap painted with a different symbol on there so I chose the skull but uh yeah there he is nice and completed so I hope you have enjoyed the video guys if you have please give it a thumbs up if you have not yet subscribed hit that subscribe button and if you have recently subscribed then a huge warm welcome to you welcome to the inner circle thank you for your support but until next time guys take it easy and keep painting those minis